All right, welcome back. Police authorities in KwaZulu Natal have urged licensed firearm owners to keep their guns safe to avoid unnecessary deaths. This follows an accidental shooting of a two year old by his 11 year old brother while playing with his father's firearm. After seeing what had happened, he turned the gun on himself, and both uh, siblings did not survive. To talk to us more about this, we joined now in our studios by Sarah Chitambo, who is spokesperson of Gun Free South Africa. Sarah, good morning to you. Thank you so much for coming through. Good morning, please. This is very tragic. It's, it's, it's a terrible incident that you would not wish for any other parent. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely catastrophic. You can imagine the owner of the gun, first of all, having to mourn the shock and sudden death of his two children, mm. but also having to think about the guilt in terms of, yes. could I have secured it better? And of course, the third thing is the law has to come for him in terms of taking responsibility for that apparent negligence. So it mm. is a it, it's a painful, painful thing that I can't imagine what the family oh, is. is going I through. cannot imagine either. Just before we dwell a little on the Firearms Control Act, mm. let's talk about the prevalence of such cases mm. here at home. How often do, we, do you come across Unfortunately, such? they are quite prevalent. Unfortunately, because uh, gun owners and citizens are not compliant in terms of how they're supposed to secure their firearms. Mm. And you know, children are very curious. Very. You know, they, if they know where it stays, mm. I mean, they've seen it on television, they play around with it. I don't think it immediately, you know, reflects mentally. And the more you try to put it far away from them is the more they want to know. Absolutely. Yeah. So there are a lot of these cases and they are rising and we're seeing a lot from uh, the stats is telling us that accidental deaths, especially two teenagers and minors, is on the increase. Yeah. And what does the law say when it comes to uh, licensed firearm um, owners? Yeah. Let's talk a little about the Firearms Control Act. Yes. What does it say? How do you suppose to put it safe away from everyone else? Exactly. The Firearms Control Act is absolutely clear in terms of a gun owner having to secure the gun. So if you have it at home, you're supposed to keep it in a safe with the key on your person all the time. Mm. So the gun owner is supposed to be in control of the gun at all times. You can take it out with you, but hoister it on a holster on your person. It's not supposed to be lying around everywhere. No, absolutely not. So at all times, the gun owner is responsible and should know that it is locked away under lock and key and the key is on their person. So any, any detraction from that, unfortunately, results in a criminal act. Mm -hmm. that's, that, that's the sad reality. But as, as we said, Sarah, that children are very curious. Mm. They always want to explore and, mm. and know more of such things. Mm. How does one become too cautious, mm. more so when you purchase a gun? Mm. You cannot gun-proof a child. You, you absolutely cannot. Mm. There's no way that they're not going to be curious and go after it. The best is to secure it. And, you know, we bring guns in to usually protect ourselves from external it's forces true. or, ex intru uh, you know, intruders. But usually the gun ends up being used accidentally mm. or being used uh, in a case the of The main abuse. source of danger in our homes. In our own home. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and really, what, what do they look into? What, mm -hmm. what are the requirements when one purchases a gun? What, because I would imagine um, part of that should mm. be whether you have children, children at home. Yes, absolutely. I mean, there are a lot of uh, checklists that they go through before you can get a firearm license. We look at your mental status. We look at whether you uh, have any aggressive behavior. We mm -hmm. look at uh, depression. We look at do you... Um, abuse, alcohol, and substances. So all those things are factors that determine whether you are fit in order to carry a, a weapon. Yeah, and people may lie, isn't people, it? Absolutely. Yeah, they, they might not tell the honest truth about their behavior. Unfortunately, yeah. obviously, there are cases such as that. And that's why I think the Firearms Control Act needs to be better enforced from the police services in terms of renewal of gun licenses, in terms of fitness and, you know, always checking the fitness of a person to uh, hold a firearm. What they also do is they interview people in your life. So they interview people from your home. They interview people from your workplace just to get, gauge the kind of... Um, stableness that you have. Yeah. And what do you think uh, changes um, in last year's decision by the North Gauteng High Court to renew licenses uh, will bring in our communities, more so when one takes into consideration such cases? Mm. I think what, what, what we need to do is firstly take into account the compliance on the behalf of the gun of the gun owner that is the most important thing gun owners have to realize that they cannot be negligent with their uh, fire weapons and that they have to take responsibility mm. once it's in their possession 
for what's going to happen to it. Because there's also obviously cases where uh, even if it does, it is in your home and you've secured it, it can get stolen. That's true. And once it's stolen, you can't keep in, you know, in track of where it goes. And also, um, there's also an issue of not complying in terms of change of address, change of status. So police will try to be renewing these firearms, but they do not know how to get hold of people because they've not communicated their change of address or change of contact details. Yeah, and as Gun Free South Africa, you've repeatedly said that the act is poorly enforced. Mm. What do you think is missing? Where are the loopholes um, yeah. in the act? I mean, we hear from citizens themselves in terms of the turnaround times, the waiting times to get a gun license renewed. I think they're not enough, they're not properly resourced. They are supposed to be in each police station, um, a designated firearms office, and we see that this is not actually being enforced. So people get frustrated that we trying to abide by the law, but when we come there, there's no service provision in terms mm -hmm. of what needs to happen, or it takes long, or I have to start from the beginning in terms of getting my firearm license. So there is better resource, it needs to be better resource from the police services so that we know that we're actually keeping track of guns and know where they are. All right, and in terms of the law, I believe the father will be facing some charges for the deaths of his children. <sighs> According to the law, yeah. um, him being negligent is a criminal act. So yeah. that's him not having taken responsibility for what's supposed to have happened to his gun. So it's, it's hard to say if he'll be charged mm. for... I know there's an inquest that's gone out in terms of this particular case. Um, I think that there have been similar cases in the past where the law feels this person has... Has has you know has faced the law just by losing the child of their the, mm. the life of their child, but um, we'll have to, s to keep wait a close and see what happens. And see. Yeah, all right. We'll leave it at that, Sarah. Thank you so much for coming through. Thanks, Palisa. Thank you very much indeed to Sarah Chitambo, spokesperson of Gun Free South Africa, talking to us about this unfortunate incident where um, a 11 year old boy killed his two year old sister accidentally. So and then when he realized what he had done, he immediately turned to the gun to himself. Talk to us about this incident. What do you think should happen going forward at Morning Live at CBC? It's a Twitter handle. We're taking a quick break.